Okay, now that we've finished setting up the open and close switches and the travel stops, we can now commission the servo NXT. We're going to start the unit in the closed position as indicated by the indicator. When I apply power, the NXT will light up. Key things to note are going to be the flashing auto calibrate sign. All new servo NXTs will need to be calibrated when they're applied to the valve. If it's blinking, the unit has not been calibrated. The blinking Bray logo, this is the Bray heartbeat. If this is flashing, the unit is receiving power and functioning properly. The next thing to notice is the command, uh, the fault area. Here we have a set of lights indicating certain faults. At the moment, the only fault we'll have is the command signal because we haven't supplied a signal yet. Now we'll begin the auto calibration. All you have to do is hold down the auto calibrate button for one second and the calibration will begin. The unit will now go into open and close a couple of times to complete the calibration. The unit has now completed its calibration. We know that because the auto calibration light is turned off and it's now defaulting to the closed position, which is what the, la the fail position has been set to. The only uh, fault we have is the command signal fault, which we'll get rid of when we supply a command signal. Now that we've finished the calibration, we need to set the NXT for the input signal we're going to provide. To do this, you hold down the check mark. This will now let you use the up and down arrow to move the cursor through the different variables that the NXT can be set to. This first square is for the input signal. So in this particular example, we're going to use 4 to 20 milliamps. I'm going to make sure that I go to the 4 to 20 milliamp section and hit the check mark. This is going to tell the NXT to look for a 4 to 20 milliamp uh, signal. We could also do the same thing for 0 to 10 volts if you wanted to. The same setup can be done for the output if you want an output at 0 to 10 volts or 4 to 20. And then the other setups we'll go explain in a, a separate video. With the input signal setting set, we can now supply the input signal. In this example, we'll be applying a 4 milliamp signal. And as you can see, as soon as the 4 milliamps is reached, the command signal fault light turns off. This unit can now be controlled through loop power. As I increase the loop power to 10 milliamps, the unit will go into the open position. For full open, we'll go to 20 milliamps. And you want to test the close and open positions to make sure we have full functionality with no errors. This completes the basic setup for the Servo NXT on a Series 70. Now we're going to set the Servo NXT to fail in the open position. To do this, we'll adjust the fail setting. At the moment, it's set to fail close. We wanted to set to fail open for this particular example. What will happen is, on loss of command signal, the unit will fail to the open position. To do this, I'll hold the check button for one second, use the blinking cursor to go to the fail section of the settings side, bring the cursor to the open position, where, see where it's blinking, hold the check mark, and now the unit will fail in the open position. We can prove this by removing loop power and now the unit is failing open.
In this fail state, the unit failed open because the command signal was lost. We know the command signal is lost because we have the error code for loss of command signal. Now we're going to go and adjust the speed of the actuator. At the moment, it's set for 100% speed in the open direction and 100% speed in the closed direction. This is designated through these LED windows located right here. The open LEDs are set for 100%, the closed LEDs are set for 100%. If we wanted to slow down the closed direction, we can use the settings menu to adjust how many LEDs are lit here. And we can do it in 20% 20 uh, 20 increments. So we can hold the check button, bring the cursor to the closed section of the menu, and we'll bring it down to 40% speed. And you can see the LEDs turn off to indicate we're at 40%. Now we can test this by sending loop power into the closed direction. Notice how the unit is now stepping the power to slow down the motion of the actuator. Now going in the open direction, we have it set for 100%. So when we go in the open direction, you'll have continuous power. Now we're going to talk about how to get rid of the feedback pot error. When you have this error, the FB pot light will turn on. What's happening here is the potentiometer is outside the viewing span for this actuator. To adjust this, we're going to remove the indicator dome, and we need to adjust the potentiometer gear. This is done very similar to how you adjusted the mechanical switches. I'm going to make sure we're in manual mode so that when we get rid of this error, we don't listen to loop power. I'm going to loosen the lock nut, and now I want to adjust the black knob. Um, just a slightly. See how the light turned off? Now I'm in span. We're going to lock this, and this is going to confirm that we're inside the potentiometer window at least for the closed position. Now that I'm still in manual mode, I want to open the actu actuator, and we'll go to the full open position. I want to make sure that we stay in, poten in, in the span of the potentiometer throughout the travel. So far, so good. We confirmed everything is okay. We can now go 90 degrees with no feedback pot error. Now it's safe to put, put the 4 to 20 back on and go into auto mode.